Learn everything you need to know about the stock market with our beginner's guide. In this video, we will talk about IPO from the point of view of investors and how Rahul plans to approach the IPO or primary market. Rahul is now an amateur investor who typically invests in ETFs and blue chip firms after learning the value of stock market investment. Currently, it's June 2021. Rahul noticed his colleagues discussing how they made a 50% return on their investment in less than 10 days by investing in an IPO. Rahul was surprised to hear that. He believed that investing in IPOs would yield him larger returns. Around the same time, Zomato announced it would go for initial public offering in July 2021, Rahul began looking into the Zomato IPO details. He thought he himself would have generated significant revenue for Zomato by ordering food online. Rahul has decided to apply for the Zomato IPO. He searched and found a few details about the Zomato IPO. They are The Zomato IPO share price is 72 rupees to 76 rupees per share. The Zomato IPO lot size is 195 shares. Zomato IPO opening date 14th July 2021. This is the date the IPO will be open for the public to apply. IPO closing date 16th July 2021, this is the deadline for submitting an application for the Zomato IPO. Basis of allotment on 22nd July 2021. By this date, subscribers will know the status of their allotment. Initiation of refunds 23rd July 2021, for unallotted subscribers, the refund will be initial. On 26 July 2021, allotted subscribers' shares will be credited to their demat account. Zomato IPO listing date 27 July 2021 This is the date when the Zomato shares enter the secondary market and will be available for trading on stock exchanges like the NSE and BSE. There are a few more details also available regarding the Zomato IPO. Rahul needs to answer four big questions before taking the next step. 1. How much money should he allocate for an initial public offering? 2. How can you determine whether an IPO is good or bad? 3. How to apply for an IPO? 4. What is Rahul's motivation for investing in an IPO? How much money is needed to apply for an IPO? Is the first question. The answer is simple. It's only about 15,000 rupees. Rahul can't spend more than 15,000 rupees, even if he has 1.5 lakh rupees. How? And then why? There are things called oversubscription and undersubscription. Oversubscription is when a company gets more applications from public who want to buy shares than the number of shares that are made available to the public. Undersubscription is a term used to describe a scenario in which the public applies for fewer shares than the company issues. From 14th July to 16th July, Rahul had three days to submit an application for the Zomato IPO and he could still check the subscription status on that day. He can decide to apply for this Zomato IPO only if it is oversubscribed on the first two days. Oversubscription occurs when there is considerable demand for the IPO on the primary market yet there are fewer shares available. Due to the oversubscription, there is strong demand for Zomato shares, 
which can lead to high listing prices on the secondary market. The Securities and Exchange Board of India has rules that say if an IPO is oversubscribed in the retail category, the shares must be given out so that each retail bidder gets at least one minimum lot, which in the case of Zomato is 195 shares. Let's do the math now. Rahul will only apply if it is oversubscribed because retail investors are only allowed to purchase one lot or 195 shares in an oversubscribed IPO. The price at which the shares are delivered to investors is known as the issue price. In an oversubscribed IPO, it will be the highest offer price. It is 76 rupees per share in Zomato scenario. Therefore, 195 shares times 76 is 14,820 rupees. As a general rule, SEBI set the price range for one lot of share in any initial public offerings around 15,000 rupees. However, some have suggested lowering it to 10,000 rupees in future. In a strong IPO, retail investors are only permitted to contribute up to 15,000 rupees. Rahul is now aware of the budget he needs to set aside for the Zomato IPO. The second challenge is how to distinguish between a good and a poor IPO. One indicator is the details of the oversubscription that we covered previously and the other is analyzing the company's finances. Prior to the IPO, the company releases a document known as the Draft Red Herring Prospectus or DRHP. A DRHP contains comprehensive information about the company, including its business operations, promoters, financials, and industry standing. It will offer Rahul a sense of Zomato's financial health and market position and help him determine whether Zomato is worth investing in. Any retail investor will find it difficult to analyze the financial data Therefore, examining the three basic data points like assets, revenue, and profit will provide a reasonable understanding. If the company has increasing revenues and profits, it is a positive sign that the investor should invest in the company. Zomato exhibited contradictory financial data, such as a rise in assets over the past three years, consolidation in revenue, and fluctuating profit. On 16th July, the Zomato IPO was subscribed 38.25 times. The public offering was oversubscribed 7.45 times by retail investors, 51.79 times by qualified institutional buyers, and 32.96 times by non-institutional investors. Now Rahul knows how to identify a good and poor IPO. Rahul can apply for an IPO by navigating through Goodwill's website. He can go to the Smart IPO section on Goodwill's website by clicking My Login and selecting Smart IPO. In the same window, he can find information about the IPOs such as the open date, close date, lot size, price band, and face value. He can then choose the IPO he wishes to apply to. He needs to enter his client code or PAN number details for login and he will receive an OTP on his registered mobile number. After entering the OTP, he can see his DPID on the same page. He can then fill in the required details like bank UPI ID for payment, fix the number of lots and select bid at the cutoff price. Rahul knows he needs to keep approximately 15,000 rupees to apply for one lot. After submitting the request, the payment for IPO happens 
through a process called ASBA. As part of the ASBA process for IPO applications, you authorize your banks to block an amount equal to your application amount. Keep in mind that the IPO payment is not deducted from your account at the time of application, it is merely blocked. In essence, you continue to accrue interest on these funds. The payment is not deducted from your bank account until the shares have been allocated to you. Now Rahul knows how to apply for an IPO through his broker, Goodwill. The final question is, why should Rahul invest in any IPOs? Looking at Zomato, the issue price was 76 rupees. The listing price was 116 rupees. The shares were sold at a 53% higher price than the issue price. So, since the listing price was higher than the issue price, we can say that the Zomato stock was listed at a premium of 53%. Assume Rahul got the IPO allotment. He sold his shares on 27th July 2021 on the listing day itself and was able to make a profit of 53%. Who is he? He is a trader who focuses on short-term gains rather than long-term gains. The Zomato share price fell to 60 rupees during the month of July 2022 below the offer price of 76 rupees. So it's a good move for Rahul as a trader. On the other hand, Infosys made an initial public offer in February 1993 and was listed on stock exchanges in India in June 1993. Trading opened at Rs 145 rupees per share compared to the IPO price of Rs 95 rupees per share. The recent high was around 1930. Can we say if an investor invested 10000 rupees in Infosys in 1993 it is worth approximately 2.5 crore rupees today taking into consideration CAGR dividend bonus shares and splits. Reliance Industries, PCS, Muthut Finance and many more are examples of long-term profitable IPOs. Now Rahul understand that through IPO he can make short-term profit like a trader and can also be a long-term investor. The fluctuating Zomato prices upset Rahul. He intends to discover how and why the stock price fluctuates, which will be covered in our next video.